What is up, everyone? Welcome to SQL Visualized Part 2. In this video, we're going to jump from the basics of SQL into the more intermediate range of SQL. And hopefully at the end of this video, we'll all understand the concepts that a data analyst or someone with a similar skill set would be able to pick up and use in their daily life. So this is SQL Visualized Part 2. The first thing we're gonna do is just refresh back to what a join is. It's definitely one of the most important concepts in programming. So if you remember the join, we have table one and we have table two. So these are two separate tables, but they have a common column and that's that blue column. And if you'll notice that there's colors in that blue column that correspond, say the colors in the table two column are corresponding to some color in table one, even if they're not exactly matched up in the same uh, row. So what's gonna happen during the join is we're gonna find that common data in common, <laughs> I say common a lot, and we're gonna go ahead and link or join the two tables together to create sort of like an ultra table. You can see kind of that process here, the rows move, and then the tables join together on their common rows. Now, what I didn't tell you last time is that there's a lot more to just, uh, you know, a simple rearranging of the rows. For example, if there were duplicate records in table two, for example, two dark green columns, uh, dark green uh, cells in that blue column, when we did that join, there would actually be, it would make, create two new rows in that new data set. So we'd basically have a duplicate row with all the extra data from uh, table uh, one, table two, table two here on the right. I, it's, it's hard to remember. Um, there would be duplicate, there'd be two different rows to correspond with the two different rows here in table two. Um, and that is just one of uh, several kind of complications when it comes to joins. Um, I don't think the duplicate thing is that hard to grasp. Um, if so, let me know, maybe I'll do another video on it. But I do think that the next uh, topic is going to be a really important thing for you to grasp if you're going to be using joins in your everyday life. So that's just the end of our select statement. We pull it down. We have the data from the two different tables combined into one nice select statement. All right. The left join is one of the new concepts I'm going to go over in this video. And then and the left join is a similar to the join, obviously. Um, but there's one crucial difference. And that is that the left join is gonna make a distinction between data we pull from table one and data we pull from table two. And it makes that distinction based on availability. So table one here is on the left, and I did that on purpose. A left join, you have to think about it as reading left to right. So basically a left join says that the thing you read first, in this case table one, is gonna be the left side of the equation. And the thing you read second, in this case, table two, is gonna be the right side. So we're joining on that blue column still. But what the left join says is I only wanna take all the data from table one. I don't care if it doesn't match, if there's no match in table two, um, I want all that data. And in table two, we're gonna do what would be a regular join. So if there is no match, we're just gonna lose that data. And I'll illustrate here as we kind of noticed that I did something, I pulled a fast one on you. <laughs> and basically the last two rows here, the last row in table one does not match up to the row in table two. So when we actually do that, uh, do the join, table one is gonna arrange itself uh, before that actual join and it's gonna just leave off the rows as it merges with table one. So now at the bottom of our table, uh, of, our, of our combined join table here, we just have a whole bunch of nulls. So now as we get ready to do our select statement, we're only gonna pull down the purple column from table one and the yellow table from column two, but we're gonna leave out we're basically going to get a null value for that last col that last value there in table two in the yellow column. So we'll see that there. So, and how that works in SQL is it would be null, that's capital N-U-L-L, -L, 
Um, if you were to port that into Excel, it might just be blank or it might be an NAN and some other kind of programming language. So that's the left join in a nutshell. Um, and that, with that, I think you can do a lot more advanced um, queries than you could do with just a plain regular join. All right, the next big concept to go over is the subquery. And this is a concept that I'll admit took me a few tries to really grasp. Um, it's kind of when we go from, I think it's a good example of going from level one to level two SQL programming. It's how you know when you got it, you're ready to, uh, to start getting, uh, getting deep. So what is the subquery? Well, the subquery is basically a way that we can, uh, summarize some data that we need, um, later in the query. So we're going to, we're going to summarize data and then query that data that was just summarized. Let me give you an example. This is table one. Um, we have a bunch of monkeys, uh, you know, plus one point. If you can figure out how I name these guys, we have Kenny, Stan, Kyle, Wendy, Wendy, Bebe, and Butters. And then we have the amount of apples they eat per week. So let's say that I wanted to say to, to query, not, you know, having a blind look at this data, um, what, what was the monkey that eats the most apples in a week? So I would start off with something like selecting the max of apples as the max apples, because I'm, I'm going to need to know that value um, from table one. But then I can't just select the max because I'm not interested in the amount of apples. I'm interested in the monkey who's eating all those apples and costing us so much money at our zoo or whatever. So to do that, I'm going to need to keep this result, this result somewhere and use it somewhere else in my query. And that's where the concept of the subquery come, kind of comes into play. So in SQL, we're going to wrap those in parentheses and we're going to give it some sort of uh, nickname. Now I called it subquery, but it doesn't have to be named subquery. I just did that because it's going to be an easy thing to reference. So now that we have this value, what SQL does is once it gets to these parentheses, it just evaluates that expression. And so at the end of it, what we're going to end up having is the max of you know, the amount of apples, the max apples, that's just what SQL is going to see there. So it's going to see that number 45, which is uh, Stan's max apples. But as we look for the monkey who has the most, who eats the most apples, uh, we're going to go ahead and build the rest of our query. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select, and what we can do, is, instead of saying a table name, we can actually just say the name of that subquery. And we will, we will select from that subquery, and we will join onto table one on the value from the subquery called max apples to table one's apples. And when they join together, we see, we get this, uh, this final statement, and then we select the uh, column monkey from that resulting joined table. So that's all it is to a subquery. It's uh, it's definitely maybe a little more complicated than that in practice a lot of times. But what it does is it opens you up to basically 10 times as many possibilities as a regular select statement. So they're really, really neat. All right, the next concept to get into is the temp table. Now, the temp table is something similar to the subquery. It's a way to aggregate data in the way that's going to be useful for you. Um, the difference is that when you're building a temp table, it actually exists out in SQL outside of your query. It's a little bit like creating those real SQL tables that you probably assume, you know, some SQL dev somewhere makes. But the temp table only exists for the period of your session as you're querying the data. So to see why this might be useful, I have an example of uh, our monkey data set again, we have table one, which is the old table we just saw in the subquery example with the uh, monkeys and the number of apples that they eat. And then we have table two, which is the monkeys with number of oranges they eat because they have a multi-fruit, diverse, all fruit diet, apparently. So in the previous example, we wanted to know which monkey ate the most apples. But what if we wanted to know which monkey ate the most fruit in general? Or what if we wanted to know which monkey ate the most apples compared to oranges or, you know, which monkey 
uh, ate the second most fruit? What? There's a lot of different questions we might want to ask this data. And we might be really, it might just be helpful to have it aggregated somewhere that we can reference it throughout our analysis session. And that's where the temp table comes in. So we build the temp table by first declaring this statement right here, create temp table. And this is all, you know, um, SQL. This is not uh, my nicknames. And then fruit habits, which is my name of the table as, and then we some sort of, we, we give it some sort of name to create the table. And that's going to be a, a select statement. So as, and in this case, select star. So star means give me every item in the table. Um, and if you join tables, it's going to give you every item in both tables in the join of the tables. Um, if you want to just do it from one table, you could do something like table one dot star. And that would give you all the um, information from table one only. But that's just a little option if you want it. All right. So we're going to obviously want to join table two on table one on the monkey name. So we have table one dot monkey equals table two dot monkey. Now here, there's definitely a one-to-one -one between these two columns. Again, I didn't want to be too crazy complicated, um, but just know that if there was no match, since we're doing our inner join, uh, rows that don't have a match in the subsequent table would go away. And if there are duplicates, we'd create two records or however many duplicates there are in our new join table. So good to just refresh on that. So finally, obviously you want to summarize a little bit. So we're, we're going to add the table one dot oranges and table uh, two dot um, or table one dot apples, table two dot oranges and have a total fruit in uh, column. And now we have a table in our data that gives us more information than just the two different tables separated. So now we can, I think, create some more simple queries without having to resort to a whole bunch of subqueries or something like that. And we can use this uh, information and get a lot of different summary data from it. So that's the idea of a temp table. Um, not all SQL languages support temp tables and not all SQL environments support temp tables, um, but some do. And if you have that as available um, as an analyst, I think you'll find that it's, it's usually really the way to go because it's really flexible. It's something you can still reference multiple times and you only have to create it once. So that's, te that's the temp tables. And that brings me to the last subject of this video. And uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. But this subject, I think, is, is we're verging on, you know, kind of that middle ground of intermediate. Like this is, this is getting into, um, m you know, a much higher skill set, I think, than some of the previous concepts. So this is the CTE, and that stands for Common Table Expression. Um, the Common Table Expression is, I think you can think of it sort of as a combination of a temp table and a subquery. And what it does is it lets you define some data, summarized, so something like a subquery would be, um, and it lets you reference that multiple times. But it doesn't do that by creating a new table in the workspace like a temp table does. It does that by simply creating it during your select statement, and then you're able to reference it multiple times. So why will we use this when we could use a subquery? Um, there's a few technical reasons, but the main reason is it's it's just going to be a lot simpler to use if your data would gain from accessing the same table several times. So let's say that we wanted to do an example where we wanted to find out which monkey eats the most fruit uh, of, of our cohort here. And to do that, obviously, as we saw in the last example, we're going to have to join on monkey table one and table two and add those two columns of fruit together. So let's first try an example where we try and do that in a subquery. So we're going to make our first subquery. Obviously, we want to max. Um, then we want to get that max fruit value. So we're going to have to join the columns together and then uh, add the two columns together. We're going to join the tables together and then add the two columns together to get the max fruit number. And that's in our subquery one. You'll remember we did the same thing in the subquery example. Uh, but then, so our next step was to join, to rejoin the original table on that uh, max fruit value so that we could see which monkey it corresponded to. But there's a little problem here, and that's that we don't have a max fruit column in either table. 
So we're gonna have to do another subquery. We're gonna have to join select star and then, oh man, this is gonna get pretty nuts because not only are we gonna have to do another subquery, it's gonna have to be super long. We're gonna have to add uh, you know, the, the, the total, uh, the apples and the oranges together and we have to do it from these uh, these two tables joined together. And trust me, a lot of queries can get way more complicated than even that. So when you have this case where the, the subqueries are just gonna be basically referencing the same exact data set over and over and over, it's much better to use a common table expression or a CTE. So what does that look like? So instead of defining the subquery in a parentheses like you do, um, with the subquery, with the CTE, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out at the beginning of the query by defining the CTE that you're gonna reference. So the, and I think that one of the key words here is common. It's something that you can reference over and over again. It's like a, like a, a common little table that's shared in space that your query can access multiple times. So in this case, I am using the CTE here as a nickname. You can call the CTE anything you want, I'm just saying CTE here because it's gonna be helpful to remember what it is. So the first thing you have to do in this expression is define the columns that you're gonna have in your CTE. So think in the subquery, in this case, we're gonna to want to have the name of the monkey and the total fruit. And then you can define that CTE. And in this case, we're gonna use kind of that base table. It's actually gonna be the exact same table we had in our temp table. So it's gonna be monkey, um, well, with the exception that we're not gonna keep the apples and the oranges columns, because all we need, really need is just the monkey and the total fruit to eventually get that monkey who eats the most. So we'll, we'll have the select with the monkey name, the total fruit, and then we'll have table one joined on table two. So with that simple common expression, we can now see what happens to our data. It becomes this little CTE with total fruit and monkey together. And now we can just simply reference that several times in our select statement. So with CTE monkey fruit as, then our little table, we can now select the monkey from CTE and I'm gonna reference it and I gave it a nickname here. That's why it seems like it's repeated in a weird way. It's from CTE, uh, CTE one is my nickname. Join select max total fruit as max fruit from CTE. I give another little nickname here. CTE2, and notice that is a little subquery, yes, but it's a much shorter subquery now that we're just referencing that common table expression. On CTE1, we're joining on the total fruit, whichever monkey has the max fruit, that's who we want. So we're gonna pull out that uh, max fruit first value, that's 81, and then we're gonna join it back to our table. We're gonna realize, oh, it's that monkey Stan again, and he's, uh, he's the one eating the most fruits. So that is a CTE in a nutshell. Um, if I'm ever feeling up to the task, I might do an advanced SQL programming video, and in which case I might get into some of the more nuanced um, methods for uh, a CTE. There's a lot more you can do with them than just having a simple, easy way to access data. But I do think that's a really good introduction to what a CTUT can be useful for. Well, that's all I have in this video. I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's been a good summarization of some of the different aggregates and left joins and in ways that you can sort of uh, get a little more creative in pulling data. I do think that SQL is really fun because it allows you to really express yourself and your creativity by limiting, you know, how much you have to work with. It's all tabular data. There, you don't have to like, you know, create find some esoteric package it's all, the rules are really well defined and you can do some extremely intricate and exciting things with just those commands in SQL. And understanding these intermediate aggregations and left joins is a great way to get you there and get you into that expert space. Well, until next time, have a great day.